I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. The president of the New Paul School Board has resigned after being charged with felony marijuana possession for accepting a package through the mail that reportedly contained eight pounds of marijuana. The arrest of 52-year-old Donald Kerr came as part of an ongoing investigation into the trafficking of marijuana in New Paltz via the U.S. Postal Service. Kerr was arrested after he'd taken possession of the package. Police say the pot had a street value of about $32,000. Kerr is scheduled to be in New Paltz court Wednesday to face the felony charge. This was not Kerr's first brush with the law. Kerr was a member of the New Paltz School Board back in 2008 when he was charged with marijuana possession and driving while impaired. He would later plead guilty to a reckless driving charge, but not the drug charge. In the town of Wallkill, police were searching for the man who robbed the Party City store at the Orange Plaza this morning. Initial reports indicate the man walked into the store shortly after 9.30 a.m. He threatened store employees and left after emptying the cash register of an undisclosed amount of money. The suspect may have changed his clothes in an alleyway next to the coal store before running off. He was last seen wearing a tan jacket and black pants and carrying a black duffel bag. They become a staple on YouTube. The fights that have broken out between students heading home from school in the city of Newburgh. Many of the fights have taken place at the corner of South Street and Robinson Avenue. And area residents have been speaking out, saying the fights draw huge crowds of teens and are getting out of hand. Police and school officials say they're aware of the violent incidents and the YouTube postings and are responding as best they can. Reporter Doyle Murphy will have the full story in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. Elsewhere, the coach of the Ulster County Community College men's basketball team says a vehicle malfunction was the cause of the accident Saturday that injured three members of the team. They were en route to a basketball tournament Saturday in Buffalo when the college-owned van veered off Route 209 into Wurtsboro and went down an embankment. Two of the players were not hurt seriously, but the third, Demetrius Pauling, suffered multiple fractures to his arm. Pauling was expected to be released today from Westchester Medical Center. State police in Sullivan County are continuing to investigate. Those clothing and shoe bins that uh, you see outside businesses will soon be a thing of the past in the city of Middletown. The city's Common Council has passed an ordinance that prohibits their placement at locations within the city. The bins may be a moneymaker for property owners, but Mayor Joe DiStefano says they're eyesores and targets of graffiti artists and have become a major maintenance problem for the city. It's also become a nuisance now with garbage. And people, as I said, they're, they're, they think that they can just dump anything there. And they're, they're putting mattresses, bags of clothes that have uh, uh, no use. They're putting uh, sometimes games, they pile up uh, uh, like Monopoly games or old used games there, and, and they think it's a disposable a disposal site for anything that's extra in their house. And we, um, you know, we find that our DPW crews are going around cleaning up these facilities on a regular basis, and it's just not uh, the taxpayer's responsibility for us to do that. The owners of the bins include an organization called Planet Aid that, that uh, sells off the donated items. Their claims of donating the proceeds have been the source of investigations. The new Middletown ordinance takes place uh, takes effect February 1st. De Stefano uh, says if people have clothing or other items to donate, they should take them to the Salvation Army facility on Route 211. Monticello Village officials are considering the purchase of Dunbar Towers, the half-built seven-story, 92-unit condominium complex that has sat idle and abandoned since 2008. The Monticello Village Board will reportedly uh, be looking for funding to purchase the bankrupt property with an eye towards uh, transforming it into a low-income housing complex. Reporter Victor Whitman will have the full story on the Dunbar uh, Towers proposal in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. And while you were sitting in the dark during our recent power outages, you uh, might have looked at uh, buried electrical lines as an attractive alternative to those damaged above-ground lines. But the financial numbers apparently say otherwise. A spokesman for Central Hudson says while burying lines would save them about $28 million a year in tree trimming and other storm-related maintenance costs, it uh, would cost about $18 billion to install buried electrical lines and another $3.2 billion a year for maintenance. And all that would uh, add about $10,000 a year to each customer's bill. 
Utility officials also say underground lines would be at risk of uh, damage from excavation work, flooding, frost, and uprooted trees. Well, no new storms in our forecast. Instead, we'll be treated to unseasonably mild weather for much of the week. Tomorrow will be mostly sunny, with the temperatures climbing into the mid to upper 60s. Wednesday should be mostly sunny as well, with the highs in the mid 60s. For breaking news, keep clicking back here at Record Online. And for a wrap-up of all the day's events, pick up tomorrow's edition of the Times-Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.